this needs to come off, which means got to disconnect it from here. I guess you don't have to. You could uh, disconnect this bolt and probably swing this up. This is my first time doing it, so I'll kind of figure it out as I go. Um, but this bracket does need to come off so I can get at the bolts behind this guy and take that whole thing off. Spin on the other side. So you can see that this bracket, it does stabilize it. Like you can, you can move the engine, you can see it move here a little bit. But this bolt isn't necessary to hold the whole engine up. You got another one over here. You got brackets in the back and underneath and it's bolted to the frame. Um, so yeah, this one bolt is not crucial for the whole thing. And that's good because we're taking it off. Lift this bracket up and out of the way. Set it aside. Um, if your motor mounts are bad at this point, these little rubber grommets that are in the inside here, if those are bad, this would be a good time to change it. These ones look brand new, no cracking, nothing, so I'm just going to leave them. Um, what I do want to do, though, is I need to take off this whole bracket, and there is a bolt down here, if you follow this arm down in the center, right at the bottom, that needs to come out as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you could probably take these bolts off in the back here, take this whole thing off and just disconnect the one that's down here, and then pull the whole thing off. What I'm going to do is take this off in two pieces, the black piece and the aluminum piece. And just so people are aware, this black piece, you will want to put it back. This arm, this aluminum piece on top, is bolted down back here. And it kind of has an arm effect of sitting up over the valve cover. This piece then connects to the block underneath the valve cover, or the head, one or the other. And it completes the uh, support arch over the valve cover. If you don't have this piece, you could risk snapping your aluminum block when the engine wants to have enough rotation and it rotates in or away or um, onto this arm that was sitting here you know if it if it rotates into this arm just right you can end up just snapping it off back here where the the thin parts of the aluminum are so you want to make sure that you put the whole brace back don't leave anything off thinking that you're gonna cut corners or save time or you don't need something because you might be surprised later on We're going after this guy right here. He's hard to see and it's hard to get an angle at which you can see. 
but trust me, it's there. And because it sits right next to the exhaust manifold, it's going to be rusty because it's constantly undergoing heating and cooling cycles. And so, if yours is like mine, it might be a pain to get this off. We'll see here. It seems to be going okay. But I'm afraid of breaking something. If I do, I guess it's not the end of the world. Every time. Looks like it's coming off though. This is getting loose. Time to go find my socket. Found it. Let's see how many times I can do that in this job. Probably too many. slides off there's just a stud here that it screws onto and you can see the bottom here um, this hole is a little elongated and so if I can get in the camera this hole is a little elongated so that you can align it a little bit better whereas the holes on the top they're not so they'll just the screw or the bolt will just go right through those all right these next ones are a little difficult to see I can't really get a good angle or get them on camera. This is one right here. And the other one is back here underneath the cable, right at my thumb here. Those two need to come off. And then this bracket should come off. Let's try this again here. There's no way to get a socket down from the top of it, which is just crazy. Getting this thing back on here is going to be a trick and a half. You know what? Let me find a smaller wrench. All right. So thank God for cheap Harbor Freight stuff. This is a smaller wrench. It should be able to swing, yeah, see, I can swing the head of it down in here a little bit better, and this spot here is not so thick, so I can actually turn it, oh, should have been using this one from the beginning. fingers and in case you can't see it very well what I'm doing is I'm lifting it up this up with my pinky and holding it while using these fingers to try and rotate it while holding the slack on this so it's not pinching that bolt so now we can get this little troublemaker out of here there you go like I said he's got a torex head on him He's about 10 feet long. Goes over with our other bolts. Alright, so now we just lift this guy up and out. 
set them aside. Now, aside from the wiring harness and our um, spark plug wires, we have good access to the valve cover. Um, there's going to be, what is there, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts around it. We'll get those off. Uh, first, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to vacuum it, blow it out with a air hose and stuff. I don't want all this crap. There's some dead bugs and everything in here. I don't want that stuff falling into the valve train. So we're going to clean this up a little bit first. All right, I cleaned it up a little bit. Now we'll get the spark plug wires off. We only need to take three off. Um, it'll be six, four, and two, all the evens. And I'm just going to take them off at the coils. And thankfully, oh, there's some rust on that guy. Let's put some grease on him next time. Um, the wire on mine from the factory is labeled as well as the coil itself, so they're pretty easy to put back and hard to mess up. But I did have some, this one is really corroded. Let's put some stuff on him so he doesn't keep getting worse. I'm going to put him back. Um, this harness we need to get out of the way over here. We'll just take and uh, disconnect it from here and try and gently move it up and out of the way. Uh, and then it looks like this plastic cover as well needs to come off because he's hiding a couple bolts. And I don't know if he just snaps somewhere or is he actually bolted down. Well, either way, we'll find out. He can get up and out of the way. So I've wrapped this with um, some tape. It's an automotive like cloth tape. You can use pretty much any tape you want. A lot of people just use normal electrical tape. But the difference is here is the factory um, gives you this up here. I know this is like almost out of frame, but it, it gives you this plastic uh, corrugated stuff. Um, that's probably going to be brittle. And if you move it out of the way like this, you're going to end up snapping stuff off and if you have to move this out of the way a lot you're probably going to be breaking that plastic off into your valve train you don't want to do that so i suggest taking care of that before you get to this point like i said mine was already pretty bad before that point and i've wrapped it in cloth tape i don't know how well they come like that from the factory because mine was pretty much completely missing all right one other step i'm going to do I am going to take the remainder of these spark plug wires off of the coils. Again, they're numbered. Um, why I'm doing that, one, get them out of the way of the side of the valve cover, but two, so I can lift this wiring harness and set it up on top of the coils here. And then I have good access to this bolt here and the ceiling surface all the way around because I'm going to clean this up before putting it back. All right, what I did with this harness, I just zip tied it over here, keep it out of the way. Um, that lifts it up off of the valve cover and then gives me enough room to stick my hand down there for the the bolts and stuff that are holding it down. All right, getting this uh, spark plug wire cover, right, it's not a cover, it's a runner actually, they run inside here. Um, getting him off, he has these slotted grooves right here that slide down onto something as well as these locking tabs on the bottom side and you need to make sure you get the locking tabs off and then he pulls up away from the valve cover. Um, I snapped one but not the end of the world. They're there to one, uh, guide the, the spark plug wires and two, this guy, he uh, is most likely purpose, I don't quote me on this, this is what I think it's for, is so when oil comes off of the um, filler neck here and you're filling the oil it drips onto this it runs down here and it drips away from the exhaust manifold so you're not burning your oil uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the number five spark plug if I can there we go just so I can really get this thing out of the way set him down in the front between the exhaust manifold and the fans there now we have full access to one two three four five six bolts It'll come straight off, and then we can inspect 
uh, what's under there and replace the valve cover gasket as well as anything else we need to do. Well, I thought those were 10 millimeters. They are not. All right. These guys are a 3 8 Just going to go ahead and loosen them right now. I'm going to loosen them, and then what I'm going to do is crack the seal of the gasket so that I can take it off cleaner instead of trying to like peel it off. Sometimes if anyone's taken old gaskets off before, there's always like some side that sticks. And so you got to take this off and like this side will be sticking and it's got this like a rubber band on it. And it's easier to just kind of crack it the seal all the way around and then try and take it off as one piece. I already loosened these. I'm just spinning them all the way out, but I'm going to leave them in the valve cover holes for now. Like I said, I'm going to try and crack this all the way around. Whoa, there we go. That was not hard at all. Kind of work it a little bit. Some of these. Are didn't want to let go yet. Alright. Take it off as clean as possible. Try not drip any oil. And there's our valve train. Now, if you absolutely need to, you can probably reuse these uh, bolts or nuts or whatever. Um, can't think of that. Yeah, the bolts for the valve cover. Uh, you can see that there's a little washer here, and it's a rubber washer. It's pretty thick, and they smash into the opening down here. You can reuse these if yours aren't too bad. These are not bad. I I would probably reuse these. Um, I got some new ones with the, the valve cover seal that I bought, so I might just use the new ones. But if you have to, or if you're just being really lazy and these look fine, uh, there's no harm in reusing them. Now, taking the valve cover seal out, I use a pick, and this pick is a <laughs> kind of specialized. It, it's really hard to see. It's got a slight burr on the top side here. Um, my camera won't focus on it, it's too small. And what that allows me to do is just get underneath here, grab it, and it, it kind of grabs. You can see it, it wants to hang on to it. It's almost like, you know, if you zoomed in on like an insect's legs or something, they got the little hooks on the end of their feet. That's kind of what this is, um, and it just lets me go around and take the valve cover seal out, or any seal really, it's great for O-rings and everything, so we'll clean this up, get it ready for the new gasket, um, and then we'll do what we came here to do, is inspect the valve train. One of the things I'm going to do while everything's apart is inspect the valve seals, the seals that go underneath the springs here a seal against the valve and that's what stops oil from just getting dumped straight into either your exhaust or into the intake and then getting burned and passed out the exhaust. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to inspect one of these at first. They all look like they're in the same condition but if one of them has slid up a little too high it could allow oil to get behind it or if they're just worn and they slide really easy. Um, but to do that you got to take the rocker arm off then you got to take the spring off get the spring off you have to compress it and get the locks out of the retaining cap yeah um, if you're not comfortable doing this I don't suggest you do it it can you can easily make more work for yourself doing this one of the things that when you take the spring off if you do not for sure have the cylinder at top dead center you can drop your valve into the engine and now you gotta take your cylinder head off and it's just a pain in the butt so uh, I'm gonna make sure that I do have the cylinder at top dead center I'm just gonna do this center one here and um, look at the exhaust side first then check the intake side but what I'm gonna do to make sure 
that I have this cylinder at top dead center is when the exhaust rocker pushes down, which opens the valve, and then comes back up, so it, it'll push down and come back up. Uh, it, it will then cycle over to the intake side, which will then push down and come back up. What you want is when this guy is pushed down and come back up and you're just about to cycle this guy open so that both of these are at the top or as at the top as much as you can get that's when that cylinder is at top dead center because what it just did is it pushed all the air out the exhaust side it is now ready to draw in fresh air from the intake side and so it, it came up it pushed it all out this guy closed He's just about to start, uh, the piston is about to draw down, draw in fresh air, and this guy will open. You want it in that in-between stage. So what I'm going to do is cycle the engine around. This guy was pushed down, he's going to come back up, and I'm going to uh, rotate it a couple times, make dang sure I got it at top dead center, um, and then go from there. The other thing is, I know this is the exhaust side because the exhaust manifold is right here, and it's in line with this spring. And then same with this guy over here, he's in line with that one and in line with that one. The intake side, you can also look at, this is the injector. He's kind of angled in, uh, in this direction. It's because he's angling towards this rocker arm. And same with this guy, he's angling over here and this one over here. And again, exhausts are in line with the exhaust manifold. So that's how we know which ones are which. You can see now this guy is getting pushed down. It is now on the intake stroke. He's opening and the piston is drawing fluid, or not fluid, <laughs> hopefully not fluid, air, which is a type of fluid I guess, down into the cylinder. And then when we crank this over enough, you gotta get past all the compression strokes of this guy. And you can see he's coming back up now. We'll do one more cycle around, and what it'll be is these guys will stay open, or at the top, of their uh, stroke, and so they're not pushing the springs down, and what that's doing is the cylinder is now compressing the air. So on its compression stroke, it'll ignite the fuel, and it'll come back down. And then once it's at the bottom, this guy will open again, and it'll draw it back up. So now we know this guy opened, this guy is not opened, it's on the compression stroke. When this guy opens, this guy will want to open next, and that's how we know now we're at top dead center. Now you can see this one just started to push down. That means the cylinder is on its way back up. And you can actually tell when the valve, now the valve is coming back up, it's closing. And we're right about there and now what I'm going to do is this guy is going to start opening right as he starts moving I'm going to actually reverse the engine a little bit see now he went down 
what I'm going to do is click my ratchet in the opposite direction and back up just a little bit. Nope, too much. You saw that there. All right. Oh, intake moved ever so slightly. We're going to back it up. Exhaust moved ever so slightly. Go forward. There. I think that is top dead center for these two. As close as I can get it without actually sticking a bore scope into it or something. Um, another thing we can do to verify that is take the spark plug out. The spark plug right here. Shine a light down the hole with a mirror and see if we can see the top of the cylinder at all. It's, we may, may or may not. I don't think we need to. Um, if you have a bore scope, one of those ones that attach to your phone or USB of some sort, you can use that to go down this, the spark plug hole and see if you can see the top of the cylinder. That would be a really good way to verify it instead of doing it this way. Um, this way should work though and that's what I'm going to do. Now these are probably going to have some Loctite on them, and they're also, they're not on there super tight, but they are on there pretty good. And you're going to want to make sure when you put them back, the threads are as clean as you can get them. Uh, clean them out with Q-tip, brake clean, whatever. Because um, see, you pull this guy out, try and get this, keep the oil contained here. See this, there's going to be all kinds of threads on here, or uh, gunk on here, and, and you can kind of tell there's a discolored redness on the thread. There was Loctite or something on there before. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There we go. Yeah, so we'll put some Loctite again on it when we put it back just to make dang sure um, but otherwise we got our uh, our rocker is off and camera does not want to focus today does it and now we can start looking at the spring all right so to compress the spring there's a couple different tools you can use. Some of them attach to the rocker stud area, and then you, you have a big bar basically, and you just push down and it, it compresses the spring. Uh, the other method that I'm going to do and that I've done before is have this in place cylinder spring compressor or valve spring compressor. What it does is it's got these teeth, it fits around the spring like so. See if I can rotate this. Alright, so what this does, if we can get some more light on the subject, is these teeth go around the spring. It's really hard to see. Anyways, it goes around the spring here, and then there's these uh, platforms here that push down against the cap. And then there's these two half circles here. So the, the shiny piece in the center, that's the valve. Then there's a split that goes around it. Those are the locks. And then you got the cap. And you want to push down the cap because these locks are angled so that when the spring is pushing up, it actually seals the lock into the valve spring, which has a notch. And you'll see that once I get this off, if I don't really royally mess this up. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. I'm gonna try and show you guys what's going on here with these valve springs. If you've never seen them before, they're not entirely intuitive. Uh, so what you got is the, the cap, and it's really hard to tell on camera, but the inside of it, that inner hole, is actually tapered. And what that allows for is the slight taper on these locks. They're not perfectly cylindrical, so there's the top side, and there's the bottom side, you can see it's slightly thinner. So that means they're angled, and so what happens is they sit in here at an angle like that. 
and I'll take them back out here now that you know how they sit in there there's a little groove on the inside again my camera does not want to focus that little groove even though it's not in focus you can see it sits in the valve stem over here if I can get it sits over on the valve stem and the valve stem has a little notch that's also a little difficult to see but you can see it right there where that groove sits there if we get that in focus and those locks seal the valve stem up and so the spring then wants to pull on this valve spring upwards and so you can see like I can pull this up but I can also push it down and now it won't go any further because remember we set this to be top dead center that valve is hitting the top of that piston it will not fall into the cylinder so we can just pull it up when we want to reinstall the valve or the spring I mean and then we can push it down or do whatever we want and not worry about losing it and having to disassemble the entire head my overhead light went out but I'll try and show you the valve spring here in the hardware if you've never seen it they're not entirely intuitive and what's going on here is there is uh, the cap get the light onto the subject here the cap sits on top of the valve spring and there's a slight taper to it and you, it's hard to tell on camera but this taper allows the locks which are these guys to sit inside there and so there's one there's two halves right that sit in there like that and you can see that on the previous video previous part and the locks are tapered as well so they're not going to go anywhere and if it if you can imagine because of the way they're tapered if the spring is pushing up like it does this sits on top of the spring and the spring is wanting to pull up well, the valve is trying to stay down because, you know, it's closed against the cylinder head. And these guys, the locks, actually lock the valve spring in place. And so you got this tension between the cylinder head on this side, the locks on this side that are holding the valve closed, and then the rocker arms, you know, are pushing the valve down. So that's the whole operation of the, the valve terrain. And what we're going to do is nothing with those, actually. Coming back over here. As I lose all my tools, we're going to. Oh my god. We're going to lose our mind for a little bit while we collect our tools. Now, what, what I'm trying to do is there's this seal that's on the valve stem itself. And so, this seal, uh, you could see, it's hard to see with the angle of the camera, but I can move this up and down. And remember, we got this at top dead center. Well, I can push this down until it bottoms out because it's hitting the top of the cylinder. And so we don't have to worry about that falling into the cylinder and losing it because if you if you did that and you can't pull it back out, well now you're going to disassemble the entire head and uh, upper part of the engine just to get it back. So, But what we're going to do is replace this uh, valve stem seal. Alright, and so one of the reasons why I was replacing this it's really hard to tell because I can't get decent light on it. Overhead light died. Is one this is hard as a rock. These are no longer pliable. Uh, they do not stop oil or anything from getting past them. And you can see that the inside is just gross and covered in oil. That's probably pretty common. I would love to see this be clean, though, in the sense that if you take this off, that it looks like I just wiped this out like that, and it's not. It's got crap all up inside it. That means oil's been getting down in there, and most likely getting down into the valve itself because it's going to slowly go past the, the guide here on the valve, and work its way into the cylinder or into the exhaust somewhere somehow it's burning it and or losing it 
it's either going through the exhaust system or it's burning it into the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is replace these seals with new ones in the hope that it solves the oil burning problem. Uh, right now it's been burning about a quart, a quart and a half every oil change, which to me is excessively high. I've gone through a lot of different parts of the engine to try and make sure that it's not going getting sucked in through the intake. There's some bolts on the inside of the intake that oil likes to wick up into them and then it can get sucked into the intake that way. There's the EGR. It can suck oil through there a little bit or vapors. Um, yeah, so there's, there's different ways. The, the PB, PCV system. Um, so this is kind of my last, my last step here to try and solve the oil burning problem. All right, so the new one is on there, the new seal. Um, all I did was dunk it in some clean, fresh oil and then push it down on there as hard as you can. Uh, you can use a socket that fits this size and give it a good push. That way it's even all the way around. Um, and then make sure that the, the valve itself rides back and forth nicely and you can see it's as smooth as it was before this. And we'll uh, put the spring back on and then move on to the intake side on the same one before doing anything else because this cylinder is at top dead center. We can do both these guys at the same time or on the same round of the cylinder. So you'll want to make sure that you really clean out the threads where the rocker bolt's going to go. I'm going to install this with some Loctite and it just won't work if they're dirty. So yeah, we're going to get all the oil out of there. Oh man, that's gross. Look at that. We should clean it out anyway. It just looks terrible. It's like a bad hair day. What I'll take and do is shoot some brake cleaner down in here to really wash it out and then I'll take another q-tip to it to get the remnants of that out. So that way we can make sure that our thread locker is not going anywhere. The bolt's secured down. We'll clean off the bolt with some thread locker. We'll just we'll clean off everything. All right, I think it's pretty darn clean. Comes out pretty much as white as it goes in, so I think that'll allow the Loctite to set. One thing that might get overlooked too by some people is this is the spring seat right here, this shiny part. It's cast into the cylinder head, and sometimes they have shims, sometimes they don't. Um, but there's oil sitting there, and what I'm doing is I'm going and running along a Q-tip on the bottom, and it's hard to focus this, but the Q-tip is picking up all kinds of grime that's underneath the oil, and you want to make sure that the spring is going to be sitting on a clean cylinder head and not a bunch of crap. And so it's good to take and, one, clean the oil out of here, and two, clean the seat. Uh, you want to put it back so that the spring is not sitting on garbage, essentially. Alright, we're going to install the spring now. Put it back on the way it was. We pulled the valve up as high as it can go so we don't have to compress the spring quite so much. And now the easiest way to install these locks, you, you can do it with your fingers if you can drop it in without dropping it on the floor. There, I got one. We'll try and rotate that guy around. The other one, let's see if we can do the same thing. 
try and drop them in. The easiest way is to just kind of drop them in, but sometimes you might need to use a magnet and kind of push on the spring a little bit. And then I know it's hard to see with the light, but you can see there the, the locks are there and I'm pulling it back up so the spring is loose. You can see it wobble. And now what I'm going to do is loosen this, which will put tension back on the spring, cylinder head, valve, all that. It'll put it back to the way it was. And then at some point here, we just take it off. There we go. And we put it back. And something to note here, there is a big, <laughs> big gap on that side and not on that side. It does not matter. What matters is that this, these locks are sitting in there flush the way they're supposed to. There's purposely a gap here so that you can get them in and out and also so that's not a super super tight fit uh, you can look at actually I'm looking at this one um, this one let's see this one they all have gaps you can actually see the gap on that one so and this one I haven't touched yet so you know that that gap is not a problem before reinstalling these bolts you can see that there was Loctite on here I showed this one there was oil on it I cleaned this off the Loctite on here it really only engaged the last little bit at the end here. The rest of it is the factory applied um, goop. And the way you can tell is that it looks like there's little air bubbles in it. That comes like that from the factory. And then down here it's smushed out. So what I'm going to do is uh, I, I don't want to reuse it like this. I want to put my own Loctite on it. I'm going to clean this off with a wire wheel and then uh, reinstall it with some of my own Loctite. Now installing this again, it's going to be, I, one, I cleaned this up, you can tell, <laughs> compared to the other one. Um, after it's installed, right now it's just sitting on there, I don't have the bolt in there to hold it yet, you're going to end up compressing it a little bit. There's a thing called preload on this, and these are non-adjustable, they will just sit down into where they're meant to sit. Uh, the preload is on these vehicles is determined by the length of the push rod, which is back here. And so we don't have to worry about adjusting these at all. We just tighten them down to the torque spec, which I think was 25 foot-pounds. Uh, I'm going to put some Loctite on it, and we should be good. Um, after that, though, what I like to do, and I'll do this when I'm done with the whole bank here, is I like to pour oil all over all of these uh, valve, valves, the, um, the rocker arms, everything, and really saturate them in oil and you'll end up adding a bunch to the crankcase, but that's fine. Uh, you can either take a little bit out or just don't add a ton. Um, but I want these things to be super oiled because I've cleaned them. You know, they're they're now raw, and I, I want them to be lubricated when I first start this up again. So that's the last step before we put the valve cover back on with the gaskets and everything's clean, is I'll just come by here and I'll just start pouring oil on top of these things and make sure it really soaks into every crevice. All right, so I got my Loctite on here, all kinds of it. We're going to start screwing the guy down. Oh, where is my wrench? There it is. We'll use this guy. We're just going to seat him down for right now, and then I'll get my torque wrench to uh, get the actual spec. All right, I'm going to go ahead and torque it down right now. Um, one thing just to note, I am using an extension with my torque wrench. You shouldn't because there can be flex or um, give in the bar. This is such this is 25 foot pounds for starters, and this is a short distance, so I'm not going to worry about it. Mm, there's 25. I like to give it a couple clicks, make sure it actually all right, it's clicking at that value repeatedly. It means it's there and good. And we can move to the next one, the, the intake side, and then we'll move to another cylinder. Do the exact same thing until we're done. So to speed things up, I went through and cleaned everything up. I got all the rocker arms cleaned up. I um, 
took care of all the seals on this side. Again, I just pull the seals off with a channel lock or pliers of some sort. You just put it on there and you slowly wiggle it back and forth and it comes up. Uh, it's really straightforward once you get to that point. And then same with uh, reinstalling the spring using the same tool. You just recompress the spring and put the locks back in there like I showed. Uh, you can drop them in. I dropped them in or you can use uh, the magnet tool to kind of guide them in and then just slide the magnet off. But uh, now that they're in, we'll reassemble everything that we had taken off to get to this point and get it ready to run. I'm going to start by cleaning up the mating surface of the valve cover and the gasket. It's pretty gross and if I put the new one on there it's probably just going to leak anyway. So we'll clean that up and then put the valve cover on. I was getting a little ahead of myself, so before I put the valve cover on, I mentioned that I would take and pour a bunch of oil onto the val the rockers and the valves and everything themselves. And that's to make sure that all the oil I cleaned out of there gets back on there so on the first startup it doesn't have a dry start. So we're just going to pour oil into every piece of these rocker arms, try and get them really saturated with oil. Um, you, you really can't hurt it by putting too much oil on there. You don't want to be pouring like a couple quarts of oil into it, but you don't want to get stingy on it. This is, like I said, just to help it not have a, a dry start when you first start it back up. That It's going to take a little bit for oil to get back into all these crevices that it was before you cleaned everything up and so this is just to help with that that wear a little bit that initial wear couple places to make sure yeah you really get the oil is this little pocket here that is for the push rod the push rod actually has a hole in it and that's how oil gets squirted up into the rocker arm is through the push rod and it's good to just pour some oil into that little pocket so that it goes down into the hole into the push rod uh, and then also right in the center here where this stud is that holds the rocker arm down. Those are the bearings for uh, where it actually rocks back and forth. And then it's good to just have a little bit on the tip where it contacts the valve spring or the, the valve stem tip. Uh, it's just good to make sure that that doesn't have a bare metal to metal contact. So like I said we're just going to pour oil all over this thing, get it nice and saturated and then we can put the valve cover on. Clean up the cylinder head and the mating surface where the valve cover is going to go. I usually just spray some carb cleaner into a rag here and then wipe it down. I don't like to use carb cleaner directly on it because you might blow some junk into the valve or the, um, the valve train here. Another way, and actually this is what I'm going to do because this isn't coming off very easily, is getting a razor and just going around it really gently and scraping it clean. I think that's what I'm going to do because this, this stuff is old and it's really caked on there. It doesn't want to come off. So it's, it's coming off okay, I guess. I'd like it to be flush. Um, so what I, <laughs> that's kind of nasty coming off there. So what I'll do is I'll just go get a razor and make sure this is absolutely clean before we put the new gasket on there.
Also, when I'm wiping this is kind of common sense, try to push to the outside. Don't don't just wipe a straight line. So like when I push, I'm kind of trying to direct it away from everything so that if I break any of the crud or oil, dirt, whatever, loose, it tends to fall out and not into the valve train. So I'm gonna get my razor now. So yeah, just a utility knife razor. Just go along. Try not to nick anything important. And try and scrape it up and out. Sometimes you can't help it. You're going to end up scraping stuff into it. It's not the end of the world. Um, it'll get caught by the oil filter. But try to try to keep it out as much as you can. One of the things I like to do with my gaskets, ones that aren't going to be swimming in oil but necessarily touching it, is using some uh, faucet grease. It, this is just a silicone um, high temperature waterproof grease. It's meant for sealing like o-rings and stuff. And what I'll typically do is just put a bunch on my fingers and then kind of just smear it around on the gasket itself all the way around before I put it into like the valve cover or the o-ring pocket or wherever it's going to be going. Um, and what this does is one it helps prevent the gasket from binding when you install it and two it helps fill in any little impurities or uh, imperfections and uh, deformities in it and it gives it a really nice seal that tends to last a little bit longer and it helps keep the gasket a little more pliable. So uh, I've been doing this on vehicles for years and all of the one all the uh, gaskets, o-rings, everything that I've done it on, I have yet to have them get hard, brittle, fail, whatever. The um, this silicone does tend to get a little cooked because of the heat of the engine, but it still remains uh, intact. It does not wash away. It does not get dissolved into the oil. It stays where it is. And so yeah, we just coat this really well, set it in the valve cover, and then when we set it down there under the cylinder head, it'll give it a really nice seal and it doesn't prevent it prevents the gasket from binding and uh, getting deformed all right we got our gasket inserted into our valve cover now and you can see it's got a little bit of that silicone on there's a tab here that lets you kind of align it there's only one tab so you know which way to go uh, when you're putting it in but we're gonna go ahead and set this down, try and not lose our gasket in the process. It kind of wants to fall out. Just make sure it didn't fall out, okay. And then we can start uh, bolting it down. I actually am going to reuse these because they look good. I'm not going to put the new ones on. If I decide later to put the new ones on, I can uh, do that by taking them out and not having to remove the valve cover, so I'm not going to worry about it at this point in time. I'm just going to hand tighten these for now. They don't need to be overly tight in the beginning. Actually, they don't get tight very, very tight at all anyways. Um, they're just, it, it's something small like 89 inch pounds or something like that.
Start moving everything back. Got the wiring harness here. Um, this guy, I'm going to leave him zip tied up there for now. Just leave him out of the way. Get our spark plug wires back here. So we got number six goes to six. Got two goes to two. Four to four. I removed this guy, this spark plug. We'll put him back. And actually, I remember this one looked really bad. I'm going to clean him up. Put some grease on him. So this is just dielectric grease. It's something you can buy at your hardware store or auto store or wherever, really. They're, it's sold all over the place. Um, what it is, is it's just grease to keep corrosion from happening. It, it doesn't let water in. Um, that's all this is for. It doesn't actually conduct electricity, the, the dielectric grease. It's not a conductive grease. There's nothing in it. There's no metal flakes or uh, conductive fluids of any kind, but it doesn't get in the way either when there's direct metal contact. So when we put our spark plug boot back on here, it'll still work. Just in case you've never used dielectric grease, it's really common to use them on spark plugs and the wires and stuff. Just so one, they don't corrode. Two, they come apart easier uh, when you actually need to service it. This panel back, this is just the the runner, if you remember, for the spark plug wires on the front. Um, how did this guy go? I think he went up and over. I'm going to have to remove this boot. So I can get that. Yeah, I believe he went up and over there. It's the only way that that actually fits. And... Remember, there's these little slots here, hard to see, that like there's one, slides down onto the valve cover outside here, there's little tabs that it'll slide onto, and then there's the clip on the bottom, you just heard it click. Put this boot back, that one, and then we could put our wires back. The wires, some of these went up and under. Let me wasn't connected. Some of these wires went up and underneath this harness. Like this guy, number three, went up here. And we got our correction. Did he actually go under? Maybe he didn't. Went over. Yeah, that makes more sense. This all sits lower. Alright, number five, if you don't have the numbers on them anymore, you usually can figure out where they go by the lengths of them. They're, if they're factory, the lengths are usually pretty uh, set in stone and uh, can only reach one of the connectors. I mean, that's not true for necessarily, like, these ones coming from the other side, but you can make out the fact that like number six is a little longer than number two, and that's a little longer than number four, and uh, which doesn't always make sense since <laughs> six is actually closer, but by the way it's routed here, it comes over. So make sure these are all pushed down again. And that, that actually comes up way too easy. Yeah, it shouldn't come off that easy. So this is number four. What we're going to do to fix that is we're going to crimp the inside connector here. It's kind of difficult to see because of the lighting, um, but there's a, con a connector down there and it's got kind of a, a, a head on it. So number four here doesn't like to sit on there. I mean, I can just pop it off on one finger. That sh it shouldn't be that easy. It's probably why it was corroded is because it just lost contact. Um, on the inside, it's hard to see, but there's a little uh, head that kind of can crimp down 
around this post. And so what we're going to do is just squeeze it a little bit from the outside and uh, hope that we can secure it a little bit better. If that works, then great. We don't have to replace this wire or do anything with it. If it doesn't work, um, we'll look at it a little deeper. So we're just going to take this guy. I, it, I can't really give you an angle that you're actually going to see because the light is hard to get on camera. But what we're doing is we're just pinching the sides here to pinch that head down and try and get it into a spot where I'll pinch it right. You don't want to go hog wild. I mean, you're not pinching this thing flat. You're just making it slightly smaller. And then we'll give it a try here, see if it sits a little better, but we can crimp, crimp that down just a little bit more. Alright, now let's see here. There. That was good. Yeah, takes a little more effort to pop it off. When it goes down, it kind of makes a good, good. You can feel the the resistance as it goes over the the post. So I'm gonna just give it one last crimp here. There, and you can hear it. It actually popped down onto it. That's exactly what we want. So that's a good contact and check the rest of these yeah they seem fine so all right moving on to the next thing all right we'll put the brace back there's some sand in it if you remember it's these two 10 foot bolts that one's got the star head which went on the right side and then the normal bolt that just went on the left we'll do the normal one first because it was easier and it'll give us a little bit of a guide to set up the other one, which was a pain in the butt. So, set the wires there for now. See if I can get the bolt from behind. Come on, where is it? You gotta kind of hold the bracket up a little bit just because of the way it doesn't rest on the valve cover itself it uh, has a connection onto the intake and cylinder head and sits up a little bit so you gotta hold it so that you can get the bolt started otherwise there's tension on that bolt and it doesn't want to thread in without some help but I would like to do this with my fingers as much as I can because getting a wrench in here was a pain in the butt now for this other one that was the troublemaker. We'll see if we can thread this down with our fingers again. Oh, ah. Really I just want to get this one started with my fingers. Sorry I'm going to block the camera's view here. I can't get a good angle on this with my fingers and let you guys see at the same time. All right, I think, yep, we got, them, we got them both started. Good, good deal. Uh, which one was it, it was this one. All right, now we can do the fun task of tightening this guy down for the next five years.
give that a good snug. I'm going to move over to the other one here. See if I can get it from the back. I want to make sure these are pretty darn tight. I don't know what the torque spec is on them, but since it's holding some of the engine, I'm going to make sure they're at least as tight as they were when I took them off. You also don't want to, don't really want to strip them out. Ouch. That's pretty solid. Now we can put the the black brace that went in the front here. Put this guy back on. And if you remember, there was a stud down here he sat on. We'll set him on that. And then we have these two shorter bolts. Get those started. And then there was the nut at the bottom. The nut at the bottom was a 13 millimeter, and then these guys were 15 millimeters up here. A lot of rust down there. Okay, now we'll put our brace back here. It was just the two bolts. Too long. Oh, every time. Got it. It's just the two that went through here. The nut on one side. back here. And you might have to pull the engine a little bit to get the bolts through because they're kind of tight. Tight uh, suspension wise on the engine. You got all these mounts that are trying to hold the engine in a specific way to stop it from moving. So just grab it back here and you can pull it forward a little bit and slide the bolt in. And these ones, I, again, I don't know the specs on them, but I don't think they need to be incredibly tight because the force is not on the bolt itself. The force is on, or sorry, it's not on the nut. It's on the bolt itself that's through here, and you're really just trying to hold the bolt in place. You're not trying to sandwich anything together, per se. So having a high torque on these bolts is probably not necessary, but... Don't take my word for it. Go look it up yourself. Find out what proper torque specs are. So, All right. Everything's down. I don't have any missing or extra bolts and nuts and stuff. Let's see. I can take, in, take the zip tie off of this guy here and put the cover back on, and I think we're done. <laughs>